I'm Eric Liu, and I'm here with Yo-Yo Ma, and uh, I share that hope that Hank Willis Thomas just expressed, that uh, we might be able, through our work and our art, to uh, leave some kind of legacy that uh, people will find useful and meaningful. Uh, Yo-Yo, you and I have been having a conversation over many years now about what it means to be a citizen artist uh, in both directions, the artist as citizen, uh, as you certainly are, and the citizen also as artist, thinking about uh, how you move in the world as a certain kind of art form itself. And um, we're gonna have a conversation that is going to be structured in part by questions that are posed on billboards from this unfinished For Freedoms uh, project, uh, where billboards are being put up all around the United States and beyond. Um, and I'm gonna pose the first question to you so we can dive right in. Uh, this is a question from a very moving billboard uh, that I actually saw, and it is this. How do you keep your heart open? That's actually the job of a human being and of a musician. Um, the heart is a muscle. And if you don't use a muscle, it atrophies. The brain, in a way, is also a muscle. And I think you can't just keep your heart open all the time. You, you do have to check in heart and brain together uh, in equilibrium so that uh, you, you basically you feel things, you intuit things, but you also analyze things. And if you do both back and forth, uh, you have the greatest chance to keep your non-judgmental side active, which is uh, some people call beginner's mind. A child is full of wonder because everything is new, is for the first time. And we treasure that as adults because, oh, it's so wonderful because a person who is in a way innocent from or free from judgment can actually see a different view and a different world that actually need that we can compare to with the you know the analytical mind but I, i'm curious what how how you came to this open open heart open mind citizenship idea you know what uh it, was it did it come through uh experience from studies because right now we're going through a lot of pain and so what can we do with all this pain? We've got to first let it flow. So much of what is dysfunctional in our politics right now is basically pain displaced, pain suppressed, pain unnamed, pain unseen, unrecognized. And I think the first thing we've got to be able to do is actually create a sense of um, permission uh, to name that pain. And what we can do with it then is actually direct it, give it a conduit. Um, once you've actually decided to name it, uh, it's not been a matter of just putting it on the table and admiring it. Uh, we, we don't want to fall in love with our pain, uh, but we want to find a conduit for it uh, where it can be converted into power. Um, and this is where the idea of citizen artistry comes in. Um, bring it down to the scale of you and strangers in the town you live in, and you walking past somebody who's hurting, you walking past somebody who's uh, homeless, uh, you encountering somebody who's dressed like they think differently, worship differently, believe differently from you. And the question is, am I going to make a micro choice right now to actually not pass my pain onto this person and judge them harshly, uh, but actually imagine if I'm hurting, they're probably hurting too. And is there an opening I can make here uh, for us to rehumanize each other? And, you know, I, I guess that brings me to the second billboard and question that uh, comes to mind uh, that, that I want to pose to you, which is, um, which is simple and incredibly complex. And that is, in this time where we are so divided and so tribalized and polarized, can we coexist? Is that possible? The first thing about coexistence is recognition of who the other person is. And, and to your comment about pain, I think it's as simple as you hurt, I hurt. Empathy. And if you recognize that I recognize 
you for what you think you are or what you're going through, I would call that trust. And if, if we can actually build on trust that's built on empathy and being able to be vulnerable and safe with one another, if we can actually uh, choose that what you seem to say is true for you, I don't deny it. I, I just, I hear you. I may have a different truth and those truths can actually exist and may even be stronger together. So in that sense, we're talking about our country and you and I are ethnically Asian, Chinese ancestry. We haven't talked a huge amount about that, uh, but and we're both, I think, patriotic Americans, right? We believe in America, but we weren't here since the very beginning. So tell me, you know, I'm an immigrant. I think you were born in the States. So that's something slightly different, but who do you think gets to be American today? And what does that mean? What does that mean historically? Do you absorb all of what America has been? The land that it was before, you know, it was called America? What is your answer? How do you deal with that as a citizen, as a human? So when you ask the question, who gets to be uh, American? Uh, well, my first answer is every last one of us, every last one of us gets to claim America. Uh, and I think that that is a, uh, and, and that is the very seat of what I would describe as my patriotism. Uh, the idea that to be American um, is not to have the dumb luck to have been born here like I was. Um, to be American is not to, you know, thump your chest and wave the flag and um, signal uh, to others uh, how patriotic you are. To, to be American is to say, wherever my ancestors and I were born, I claim this country. And I claim it not by saying it, but by contributing to it. I claim it by showing up. I claim it by creating and inviting and helping people make a new story of us. But I think... Uh, there's been a long, long time, 90, you know, great, great percentage of this country's life where Americanness and whiteness were fused together as one. And what we're living through right now, good, bad, ugly, is the decoupling of those two things. Uh, and the recognition that to be American is far more complicated than that. It always has been, to your point. Long before there were European colonists and settlers here, there was a land here. Uh, and we acknowledge that land. We acknowledge the first people who walked that land here. Um, and what it means to be American is not only to claim those creedal ideas, but it also means to commit in a spirit of the artist to always making new hybrids. America is, one thing America is not, is America is not about purity. It is not about pure bloodline, pure territory, pure you know, history, as much as we like to have genealogical study. America is about how we've been mixing blood, ideas, food, you know, DNA, everything from the get-go uh, and embracing that hybridity and recognizing that with that embrace and with that uh, recreation, we make things here that the world cannot yet imagine. I think one of the things that's very difficult for all people of all nations, but, but, but in the United States is and as an immigrant or as newer arrived Americans, are we responsible for a past that we were not part of? And, um, and are we responsible for, in a way, when are we responsible for the actions of others? Can we move forward without confronting our past? Hmm. You know, I, I think, I think it is absolute, I think the only way to move forward as a society is to confront that common collective past in its full glory and sordidness. There is a fuller story here. And that to tell the fuller story is not to negate either part of it 
but it is to recognize that actually as Americans, it turns out we're human. It turns out we have both better angels and inner demons. And it turns out we are capable at different times and we are capable at the same time of expressing them. And so if we're ever gonna move forward together as a hybrid nation, as a country that is in fact trying to do something rather audacious in human history, and that is to be planet Earth's first mass, multiracial, multi-faith democratic republic. Ain't been done before, right? We're trying it. And the only way that's going to work is if we actually face ourselves and our history, honestly, not as a cudgel, but as a, in the same way that you were saying from the beginning, a way of holding beginner's mind, beginner's heart, taking responsibility. I didn't enslave anybody and neither did you. And yet we are the beneficiaries, both of us, of so many different parts of our society and institution that were built upon discrimination. And so you can't take the good without owning the bad and what it means to be not just an American, what it means to be a grown up. I completely agree with what you're saying that the best of what we can be is to be really honest with one another about everything. One thing that I love about something that we do very naturally uh, to people we see on the street, airports, who are in the military, we go to them and we say, thank you for your service, right? We don't know what they're doing in the military and we don't, I know that, um, and it doesn't matter whether you agree with the policies of whatever, we thank them for what you know that they are willing to put themselves through. Or we thank anybody who has gone through hard times. We, we go to people who we know whose towns have been devastated because, you know, industries pulled out, but they're proud of what they've done, of what they, of, of this is their country. And somehow, uh, we just want to acknowledge what they have contributed to everybody's welfare. And I think there's a universal wish for every human being that we want two things. We want to be special and we want to belong. And if we can live with the contradictions and acknowledge that they exist um, and realize that we are living the American experiment. Our nation was invented. It is a, a, a creative evolutionary thing. We call this the American experiment. Our coins say pluribus unum, which is out of many, one. That's embedded in our national DNA. And so, you know, in that sense, we can go back to basics. We can go back to our originalism and say, yeah, let's live that. Let's make it one. And then we can move forward. And in making it one, it's, uh, it's the one, you know, in the Whitman sense of, I contain multitudes. One contains the whole and the whole of who we are um, can't be expressed, can't even be uncovered in ourselves until and unless we're willing to do those things you've described, to face pain, to reckon with our history, to name facts of who's been on the short end uh, of the stick in terms of how power has been structured and allocated by race and gender and national origin in this country's life. And then as we do that to recognize still, as you said, um, that we're trying to make this thing work together. And um, I love what you said earlier, Yo-Yo, and um, I will close um, with this line. Thank you for your service. Uh, and yours. It's great to see you. It's great to see you, my friend. It's great to be with you.